Hi, everybody. Josh here. You're listening to Interbrews. And if you're enjoying the sound of my sultry voice, say hi to Tom and Nathan, everybody. They're here, too. But anyway, this is where I, I'm just yammering on, like I said. Uh, Interbrews has a Patreon page. If you'd like to help support the show, I would be much obliged. You can just go there, and for as little as a dollar a show, you can keep the show afloat and uh, keep me out of the doghouse with my wife because I'm spending lots of money on, on podcasting, so you can, you, can, you can help me. You can do me a solid. You know, or not. Just enjoy the show, but that's, a, that's an option if you feel so led. I thank you in advance. All right, on to the show now. The following is a presentation of Stewed Productions. This is Tom. And this is Nathan. And we're here with Interbrews. This is Interbrews. All right, off and rolling. One year, almost to the day, from the last time we were here, Tom. Yep, sure is. Thanks for having me back. Mike and my daughter were here last time. Yeah. Uh, summer intern Hayden uh, just wanted to stay home today. So she's oh, man. her and the other interns, her sisters, watching reruns on Netflix or something. I think they're right. missing out. They really are. <laughs> yeah. They would actually, they'd be over there probably yelling at each other with Connect Four or something. Some nice background noise. Yes. They would have had fun. <laughs> so anyway, but we got volleyball. And it's enough of that. Nobody wants to hear about my kids. I mean, if you do, <laughs> send me a message and we'll talk. I'll call you personally. Um, Klaus Brewing here uh, in, are we in, is this, I know I, I mess this up every time. Is Jersey Village or Cypress? Jersey or? Village-ish. Okay. Um, we're kind of in between Jersey Village and Cy, Cypress. Cy Fair. Cy Fair. Jones say Road. Cy Fair. Jones Road, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, Jones Road uh, between, was it West and? It's between West and Fallbrook. Fallbrook, okay. Or most people might know 1960. Yeah, so. if, you, if you're on 1960, heading towards 290, take a left. Correct. If you're on 1960, coming from 290, take a right. Yes. Correct. I think so. Yes. Geography. If you're if you if you take the Jones exit off of 290, just keep going until you see it, and it'll be on your right. That's right. I think so. Yeah. All that out of the way, <laughs> or just check your map. It's a lot easier. Listen to the lady; she'll tell you how to get here. So. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. All right. So a year in, well, more than a year in, but a year since. The last time. Year since you were here. Um, Tap room's been open. It looks awesome, by thank the you. way. This thank is you very much. Like, you know, I want to make sure I throw out gemilte kite. Yeah. That's the only <laughs> like, real German word I know other than uh, like Frankfurter and things like that. But this this exudes that. Yeah, we uh, that was our focus. Uh, you know, we wanted to be German beer garden style. So we brought in the furniture. We brought in the decorations from Germany. Um, a lot of the uh, artwork uh, is uh, images. Actually, all the artwork just about is images from over there. Um, then we've got all our family history in the back um, that shows the history of our family and our beer cult- culture uh, from Germany. Cool. So, yeah, so we want to have that feeling. And it's, it's bright. It's airy. It's air-conditioned, which mm-hmm. is important. Yes. Um, we <laughs> do have an outdoor beer garden, which right now – uh, surprisingly amount a uh, large amount of people actually still go brave the the heat yeah. out there so okay good on them um yeah i mean why not sweat yeah. a little sweat a little we got we have them. a big fan you know most people are fine. oh right here across the table i'm a huge fan yeah hmm. <laughs> uh, you meant like an actual yeah fan. an actual fan i think there's something about drinking a german beer outside on a bench yeah it's just like those those things go together it's yeah. right yeah nathan welcome to the show oh thank you uh, Happy to be here. First time on the on the podcast. Yep. Um, welcome. Thanks. How, how's life? It's great. You <laughs> know, yeah. Good. Uh, what do they say? Living the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna have a beer? No, I'm not gonna have a beer. Oh, okay. I mean, yes to all the podcast listeners. I'm definitely drinking beer. Yeah. He's like on his third one. Yeah. Because that's what you do when you're a brewer. You yeah. just Drink beer all day. Drink maybe all make day. a little bit. And that's what, yeah, yeah. That's it. There's no heavy lifting. No sweating. Yeah. No, not just at all. all. Glorious. No importance of uh, hydration in the summertime. No. Yeah. That's just <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. Let's get into beer real quick. Sure. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a Hellas. It's a, our one Hellas of a lager. Um, it's our traditional Munich style Hellas. So very light, very good for this weather. Mm. Um, very refreshing. Um, all around good beer. Yeah. So it's an everyday drinker. It's a good looking beer too. It just looks crisp and yeah, refreshing. Yeah, it's very refreshing. Yeah, I am drinking the uh, Berliner Weiss. Yes. And it is tart. 
and it gets you right there in the jowl a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm like just kind of, mm, and it's good. Mm. It's really good. Thirst quenching. And we do um, another traditional German thing with the Berliner. Mm-hmm. Instead of fruiting it mm-hmm. when we brew it, we do the, the fruiting at the bar. The syrups. So the syrups. Yeah. So we do traditional raspberry. Uh, we did find a source for the Woodruff. Okay. Uh, which is a very interesting flavor. What's the, what is the flavor of Woodruff? Woodruff. Uh, it's green, right? It's, it's green. green. It's a uh, forest, you know, greenery. Uh, it's kind of like uh, apple pie spices plus a little licorice. Yeah. Plus mm-hmm. a little maybe spearmint thing happening. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of, uh, okay. I wouldn't say medicinal, but kind of a, yeah, like a mint. Yeah. Type deal. Mint. Okay. Slightly. Yeah. Mint. Y'all like it? Yeah. yeah. I like it. I, I surprisingly like it. It was the first time I ever had it. Okay. Um, with the Woodruff. Yeah. So. I've been wanting to take some and uh, make an apple pie with it instead of using sugar, use some Woodruff syrup in it and see what that's all about. Yeah, yeah I think it'd be, be good for yeah, why not? some culinary things, too. I'll try that. Yeah. For sure. You do a lot of pie baking? Every once in a while. I make a mean pie. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you have so much. You're a man of many talents. Oh, yeah. Make a beer. Make a pie. Make you know. a pie. Yeah. Do you do like your crust from scratch? Oh, yeah. Okay. Much respect. Thanks. Mad, mad yeah. pie mad skills. Mad pie skills. <laughs> <laughs> Represent. What came first, pie or brewing? Uh, I think brewing came first. Okay. Yeah. And then I never got obsessed with uh, pie making. Uh, I don't know if that's fortunate or unfortunate. But <laughs> You're not a 80-year-old woman from yeah. Alabama. I think it's probably fortunate now that yeah. you put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have enough window sills. You have to have, like, wide window sills. Yeah. I don't know why. And, like, pesky neighbors that would come steal it when it's cooling. Or, right. yes, they'll float over there yeah. as it... <laughs> the smell brings them over. <laughs> I think that's how the magic of pie. Yeah. So, what's your favorite pie? Uh, I think apple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's respect. boring, but no respect. Yeah. Do you have a favorite pie? Oh, apple for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. My grandmother used to make these peach pie, the pocket pies. Mm. Like oh yeah. In Mississippi, they you know they just nice. It's like a not a tortilla, but like a you know it's pie crust, but it's, it's like, like a, almost like an empanada. Oh, like shape. Empanada, yeah. Like a fried pie. Yeah, it's a fried pie. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Fried up in the pan. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah, that she'd make great. a whole bunch of them. They'd all be gone, like, yeah. like that. <laughs> so the secret was using dried peaches, not fresh peaches. Ah, because the fresh peaches would melt it, the crust down or something. Some, something yeah. I don't know. One of those old school. Like I asked, you know, I asked her long, long, long ago, and she kind of vaguely gave me the answer, but didn't want to give away all her secrets. Yeah, so now I don't. Right. I tried to do it myself one time, and it turned out horrible, and oh. I just gave up. Yeah. So which you know. Stick with podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she never could do a podcast, and uh, maybe I can do peach pie. But uh, hey, you know what? <laughs> Mutual respect. Anyway, okay. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about the brewery. Let's talk about you know what it's been like over the last. Wow, it's been kind of a whirlwind. You know, a lot of things change versus your initial vision. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, our initial or my initial vision for it was okay. I'll make you know. Four really good, solid core German beers and maybe a couple of offshoots, Mm -hmm. maybe British or, you know, Belgian or something like that. And then all of a sudden we've got 12 beers on tap. (laughs) So (laughs) it just kind of grew from there because there's just so much you want to do and so many different styles and versions of the styles uh, of German brewing, for instance. And so we've gotten a little uh, carried away, I guess. Yeah, I mean, in the best way, though. In the best way, yeah. So, but um, they've all been really well received, so I can't complain. They, um, this, I don't know why. It's like I know people on like social media get real excited about like hazy IPAs yeah. and, and big uh, like pastry stouts and stuff. That gets all the. It's a little bit of an echo chamber. Yes, I think yeah. there's about seven people who yeah. post a hundred times a day each. Yeah, like, and if you really start to, you're like, oh wait, okay, let's see what like most people like. To drink. Yeah, right. And for this weather, and then just the times of day they can come in, the styles of beer you're brewing, they're just they're just right. There's a reason they've been around for hundreds of years, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and that that was our, you know, my vision. You know, I want to brew drinkable, balanced beers, and then we'll do some specialty stuff. Uh, you know, we've done Belgian quad, you know, mm. and, you know, English dark mild, English IPA, things like that mm. that are outside Germany as our kind of our special series. Yeah. Uh, but our core is still the balanced German beers. Yeah. And so even our heavy stuff, our double Sticker, which is a, a double uh, dark alt beer, mm-hmm. even that is very well balanced out. So, um, so yeah, that's just kind of German brewing in a nutshell. Yeah. You know, so. Well, in this area and then, of course, more towards Austin, you know, there was mm-hmm. a big German immigrant 
you know, infusion back in whenever that was, oh, 1800s yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder, and may, this is me reading into it completely, but I'm going to go with it. Um, <laughs> I kind of, you know, when some, when, when a group of people has been in an area for long enough doing a thing, it's almost like that thing and that place like start to intertwine. I don't know if it's like the, maybe it's the yeast they use and that's in the air and it's right. just <laughs> the water. I don't know. All that kind of stuff. Right. It just, it goes, it just goes. Yeah, it does. Oh, um, yeah. You know, it's a thing, you know. Yeah. Shiner's been, been around for a little while as well, you know. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, so they came here as a German-style brewery, and, yeah. you know, now they're they've kind of tried to hold on to that a little bit. A little bit. A little, like a, the littlest bit. Yeah. Like the word Bach. Yeah, yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> and that's well, I think and it's the, and the name to, of the brewery. Well, yeah. I think Spritzel. it's thanks to Shiner that <coughs> I'd say probably most people in America know what a know the word Bach is yeah. probably thanks to Shiner. That's yeah. true. You there's know? there's something to yeah. that. And I want to commend you. you uh, I see your ad in the Community Impact paper, mm-hmm. just the class where you see that logo. And there's something about, say what you want for Shiner, but there's something about re- name recognition. When people just see it and it becomes, you know, it takes a while for people to recognize something, you know? Or oh, yeah. For it yeah. to become, oh, it's like, oh, yes, where did I see that? It, well, let's, let's go check that out. Yeah. People live busy lives and driving by, you know, in Jones at 55 miles per hour, which it's that's <coughs> speeding. <but> right. <laughs> they do. You should slow down and, and come in and have yeah. a beer and, and chill. But, um, yeah, no, I, kudos to you. I just, I, I, every time I see it, I'm like, that's, I'm glad he's doing that. Yeah. So. so we wanted to, I felt like these traditional styles that we're bringing back as, as our core lineup uh, was really kind of the innovative thing, even though it's very traditional. Yeah. Because everybody's going so far over to, Super innovative, super hazy, just kind of whatever they can think of to, to I think that to can make, uh, polarize you know? the uh, person that's on the fence of if they like craft beer or not. Yeah. Or it's possible to. Well, also, there's, you know? yeah. well there's just so many different people. Yeah. I mean, and, and those, those beers are good, you know? I mean, like, if, I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with any style. I like this. Yeah. I can find examples. Right. Of, you know, yeah, there's style. great examples of every style, and there's bad examples of every style yes yeah. but, but when it comes to like a, an everyday drinker yeah. have, you know sitting down having a conversation where you don't you know these styles these styles are, you know and and this is it's like sometimes you have to sit there and analyze the beer and think about the beer and sometimes the yeah. beer is more of just like the background glue to your conversation yeah. as yeah. far as like yeah. i think you could argue that most of our beers are sociable styles of beer yeah i never thought about it like that but when you do think about it it's yeah, it's, it's you can sit down with a with a, a leader of, of the Hellas, for instance, yeah. and it not be the forefront of your mind. It's just there. You're drinking it. It's great. It's mm-hmm. quenching your thirst. It's hitting your taste buds right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, you're getting another one. Yeah. So. <laughs> and it's not, you know, some of those other styles, you can have one, but then like on that second one, your taste buds are just yeah. wrecked. They're wrecked or... Um, uh, you know, our stuff is, I guess, would be considered more sessionable as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can have actually a few liters over the course of a session. I like you know? that. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, yeah. what is the ABV on the Berliner? Berliner's about 3.8. Mm. So That's great. Yeah. So I've had a, I have a huge appreciation for, like, sessionable, like, eat low ABV beers. It's like there's so much flavor in this beer. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know. I always see that as a challenge as a brewer to kind of see how flavorful I can make a low ABV beer and uh, that style was something um, before I started working here that I brewed for myself just all the time because there's something that I could I could have a couple glasses of it like in the evening and not you know be feeling toasty but yeah. something that's like a little more satisfying to drink than some water or, uh-huh. or whatever yeah and uh, <clears throat> there I'll say this and I think the Germans had it had it right it's really good like when you mow the yard oh yeah and like between like the front and back you can grab one uh-huh. and drink it and you get the there's the little bit of alcohol and it gives you a, a little energy boost like mm-hmm. it's not an it, i don't know like it's like quick energy or something yeah Maybe <laughs> that's just me thinking I'll just, <laughs> and it just it, man it just i don't know i mean water's good but this has got water in it and yeah, it just, yeah. It it's works. mostly water it's mostly yeah. water so it's, it, it works though so <laughs> i recommend a berliner or a goza or something like that yeah in yeah. between the front and the back yeah when you're yeah. mowing so yeah, I think uh, that's, those are really like the perfect summertime yard working beers. Just most people don't know it yet, right? Yeah, yeah there's a whole in, there's a oh, whole yeah. like group of people out there. I don't know. Maybe you should just follow like yard crews around and just hand out 
Hit up Berliner there Rice. Yeah. Yeah. Midday yeah. or something. New marketing. <laughs> Guerrilla marketing technique. Yeah. There. there you go. So oh, let's talk a little bit about marketing. How has the reach out into the community gone and the response? It's been great. You know, we, we, you know, we do a lot of Facebook stuff and we've started <coughs> to ramp up our Instagram, which mm-hmm. has been doing well. And other than that, we do a couple of uh, print ads, you know, Community Impact, uh, Cypress Lifestyle. That's mm-hmm. about it. Uh, the one thing I do think has been a great marketing uh, aspect of our business is our location. Yeah, uh, We're very visible to a very busy road up front, and we have a big sign, mm-hmm. and that brings in a lot of people. The, it's, there's no joke. We, you know, we kind of did it as a halfway joke to put out our sign on the street that mm-hmm. says beer is better than traffic. Yeah. <laughs> um, and literally, because... It, Traffic will back up from the light all the way through here to the next light. I mean, yeah. there'll be pe- people just sitting out there in rush hour. And there's been so many people that come in and says, yeah, I just kind of turned my wheel and came in here and decided I'd rather have a beer and wait out the traffic. <laughs> yeah. So you're, just, you're either going to be sitting out there or you could be sitting right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, AC and having a beer or two is a lot better than just sitting there. And, and you're going to get home to your family at the same time. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because if you're sitting in traffic, you, you know, I don't know, what are you going to listen to? The same songs? You know, right. Yeah. Like, um, think time or... So some silly talk radio just yell at the person in front of you. That's yeah. Productive, yeah. Right? yeah. No, you can come in and, and you know, you may want to yell when you walk in the door, but you get that first beer by smiling. <laughs> yeah. And really that it's a, it's like a, it's a form of, uh, I don't know what, uh, can, not counseling, but some, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. relaxation, right? Yeah. People need and it. And we, you know, we have a tremendous tap room, you know, uh, traffic, I think, um, to the point where our parking is sometimes Absolutely. become a little bit of an issue because we do share the facility. Mm-hmm. But the good thing is, is the landlord bought the next the lot next door, nice. and so people can start parking there, all, you know, right now. So and people already have. So that that's kind of helped uh, mitigate the. Is that parking the lot issue. with the felled tree? Somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. Like somebody yeah he's felled a tree this Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's taking down some trees, but uh, but he's pre- prepping it to develop it, and so people can park there. We've got side street parking half a block over. Uh, so there's parking, just not you know, always necessarily on site, but yeah. next to on site. Yeah. So Close we're enough. Good. I we're mean, good, I think. at the end of your short walk, there's a beer. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's the next time we need to make. Yeah. For those people parking <laughs> further away. Yeah. Just at the end of your sh- uh, count the steps. We should just like go plant those in the neighborhoods around us. Yeah. You could just like, like arrows, like, right. Buc- <laughs> like Bucky's does like yeah. 50 miles out. Oh yeah. Right. Right. You can take just a short and clean restaurant for a beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's important. That's important. At least early in the night. After a while, you're, they're probably, it's, I don't know. Just, yeah, you don't yeah. want to go in there at the end of Stein Night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stein Night does wreak <laughs> havoc on the bathrooms. <laughs> well, people's arms I feel are, sorry for the bar staff. At the end of arms the are shaky. Yeah, when yeah. holding up a Stein. Right? Do y'all, do y'all do the Stein hoist? We do the Stein hoist occasionally, uh, usually more so for events or when we do pint nights out at other, other facilities, you know, selling our what's, product. What's the record? Like right seven now, seven, seven? Our, yeah. during our, our Oktoberfest last year, yeah. I think a guy did it for about seven minutes, which yes. is a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's not close anywhere close to the world record, but for here, that's a lot. Yeah. For somebody just to get up and do it. Yeah. That's endurance and yeah. strength. And he yeah, went that's crazy. straight from here to King's Beer House. Yeah. After he got done there, here, he, he was just like doing a tour He's for all the Oktoberfests when that was happening. Uh, was this his first? Or was it? Was he already... I don't know. I don't oh, know if that no, was the I first of his so. day. But oh, I think, for first of the day, I have. I'm not sure. Yeah, but I think, like, throughout October, he, like, that's all he was doing on the weekends, was yeah. just, like, going to Stein Holding. Okay. That I wonder if he had, like, a training routine or something. If you're seven minutes, you're doing something. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. The, what is the proper... I mean, you want to go with strength, but you need endurance as yeah. well. Yeah. I... <laughs> How much you can't this? train for that and not be drinking. If you're training for that and not drinking, then yeah. that's your first mistake. <laughs> so part of it is the discipline of holding it and not drinking. Yeah. You have to get the mental discipline yeah. of just holding it there. How much does a full stein weigh? Well, the right. glass itself, I would say, is at least uh, a pound. Oh, a pound or two. Yeah, yeah it's hefty. a couple pounds. Uh, and then you've got a liter of liquid in there. Um, Which is... so. I'm I don't know, another two, three pounds? Yeah, so like four pounds. Just straight out. Straight yeah. out. Four pounds. Yeah. Cool. You need to have really short arms to kind of. Yeah. Well, T-Rex arms. Yeah. yeah. Is, this, is that guy T-Rex short? Arms That's like be. one of the advantages of having like, yeah, T-Rex arms. I bet a T-Rex would be really good at stein hoisting competition. Yeah. yeah. Horrible at selfies. Yeah. I'm yeah. Great at, have you ever seen that whole that yeah. T-Rex <laughs> selfie? Yeah. <laughs> Horrible at push-ups and selfies. Yeah. 
Um, I always thought that in the Stein holding competition, you'd do a lot better if you're allowed to drink with the other hand. Oh, take your mind off of yeah, it? Just yeah. Like, if you just stood there drinking, you wouldn't care about holding that out there. Oh, well, it's against yeah, the rules. Much, right? does, do it should be part of the rules, but it's against yeah. the rules. Do you does, do y'all do a everybody like dominant hand or can you go offhand or does there either way whatever. there's even Stein hoisting where you do both oh which is that's torture yeah yeah, yeah. I've always thought of trying it but then I was like ah, yeah I'll just, I'll just watch other people do it you know but now I'm curious I've got a I've got a Stein at home maybe I we go practice and and see maybe does water water and beer are pretty close yeah right. yeah I mean we do it with water. Uh, when okay. we do the contest, anybody uh, ever dropped a, dropped one and not dropped one, but they spill it. Yeah, which is if you spill it, you're out. Uh, so yeah, okay, yeah, that's party foul. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I polished off the Berliner. That's really good. Thanks. I can't recommend that more. Thanks. You know, highly enough. It's just, just come try it. Yeah. yeah well, that's, he that's uh, like the tell him a little bit about the pro- pro- uh, process. Oh yeah. So um, we brewed it pretty traditionally. Um, it, it's traditionally a non, a no boil beer, mm. which, uh, I've always liked that aspect of the ones that I've had that are no boil. Mm-hmm. It gives it like this, uh, raw dough taste to kind of balance out the lemony tartness. Yeah. Um, and then besides that, it was soured, um, naturally from lactobacillus that's occurring on the grain itself. Okay. So without pitching any, uh, lab cultures. So. Um, technically, it abides by the Reinheitsgebot still yeah. because it's 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 uh, malt derived. Okay. So it's all is it all malt? There's no like oats or anything like that. In it's it? malt and wheat, okay. or yeah, but malted barley, malted wheat, right. which both is abide. It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's delicious. Thanks. Like, like, yeah, it's really good. It's not soured good. for that long. We want just you know that little yeah, it's not like over. lemon zest kind of thing happening and. Yeah. I don't like sour beers that, you know, like when West Coast IPAs were really popular and people were trying to see how bitter they can make their their IPAs. Yeah. And then. Can we peel the enamel off your teeth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there's similar things, I think, sometimes happen with sour beers. It's like, how sour can we make this? Yeah. And again, what Tom was talking about earlier with the balanced approach, I think we both always kind of naturally fall into that. Like, we don't like to do the extreme. We want it to be pleasant and balanced and drinkable and something you can you know not get tired of you know something yeah. that wants you to take another sip of it mm-hmm. yeah I can't, that's, that's a great beer to me that's why i finished it because yeah. <laughs> like man i want to take another sip of that so it's yeah it's really good and i think thanks i think that's the only uh, uh, if i as i look back into my mind's you know memory bank i think that's the only traditional berliner in town now could be i'm pretty could sure be. I know, because St. Arnold had theirs. Had the boiler room. And then it's... Now they're just doing the raspberry one, right? Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. I mean, it's really good. Thanks. That's, that's, Thanks. that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's very good. <laughs> Note to self, we'll nope. brew it again. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Do that again. So, this is this the, this is the Hellas, right? That's the Hellas, yeah. Okay. So, that's our, uh, you know, it's it's one of my favorite beers. It's a Munich Hellas. It's... Uh, you know, very straightforward. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's nothing unusual going on about that thing. That's about as, I don't know how else to put it. You know, some people call it boring, but. I call it beer flavored beer. Yeah, beer yeah. flavored beer. No, it's yeah. good. It's, uh, I, I yeah. love beer. So. Mm. It's light, crisp, but also has a little bit of just like this light, sweet, malty mm-hmm. thing happening to give you, you and know. And that was the whole point of Hell is Right. Yeah. Kind of uh, just south of pilsners i guess as far as like yep geographically well i don't know about geog- well, also ge- is it geographically yeah like beers like that get more bitter the further north i mean like in germany crisp bitter, but yes also but yeah, yeah. In, in both senses in of both the word senses, yes. yeah i was kind yeah, of being facetious no it's yeah. good no that's good <laughs> that's the cool thing about germany and these styles is it's very much geographically based yeah like if you look oh, at a map time. of yeah. germany you know like also obviously a berliner comes from munich right Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You're right. Uh-huh. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, I was trying to. Every time, like with my girls, I'm always like, I should teach them something, right? Because we're in, it's the summer. I don't want them to go back to school, but it's always like beer related. So oh. like, let's look at your, how do you know? What well, yeah, I start with the beer. I'm like, this is a Berliner vibe. <laughs> Where does it come from? They're like, we don't, we don't know. Yeah, we don't. We don't <laughs> we're too young to drink beer, and 
We've never been. Not interested, Dad. Not, we've never been to Germany. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, Berlin, you've heard of Berlin, right? And they're like, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And so then that, anyway. So I try to teach that. But <laughs> anyway. Where does yeah. that Hellas come from? Is there a Hellas? Munich Hellas? It's Munich. It's Munich yeah. style. Munich, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was uh, basically what their uh, answer to the pills. Uh, yeah. So. That is um, good. Yeah. So they. Um, and a lot of those historical styles are based off of like the water profiles that were occurring naturally there. And mm-hmm. Munich's water profile favored maltier beers. Thus the Dunkel. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Munich Dunkel. Oh. Most uh, fest beers as you know them also. Yeah. Where license. they have this nice lightly sweet malty profile. Yeah. So that's, <coughs> it's in the south. Like, Hefeweizen is south, right? Hefeweizen is also Munich yeah. style, uh, mostly. Yeah, Bavarian. half, you know, that's big time Bavarian beer. I mean, you don't find, you know, uh, people in Cologne, you know, focusing on Hefeweizen. So yeah. So that's the reason they focus on Kolsch. Yeah. So. It's, a, it's a totally different way than what we do here. But I yeah. like it. I like that they do it. I, you know, I just, I, I don't yeah, know. It's like you go to a town there and... You drink the one beer that everyone drinks there. Yeah. 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 I, I like amazing. it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's fascinating. Like, I don't know that I'd want to person. I, I love that there's so much variety around. Yeah. Like even here, y'all have got like the whole map of Germany here. Right. Yeah. As right. far as the styles go. Which is even that would be unusual for a yes. German brewery. I'm glad. Yeah. Y'all be, <laughs> but, you know, I like the fact that they do that. Just like I like that there's beers that are available in this area of town that aren't available in other areas of town. Just yeah. Just distribution right. and stuff yeah. like that. So <laughs> for sure. Um, I like that. I don't know if everybody likes that, but I personally dig it. Yeah. So this is a really good beer. Thank you. Thanks. Goes great right after a Berliner. <laughs> it's uh, no, it's, yeah. This is um, hell is it? Yeah, it's just one of those styles where it's just like, you know, what tastes most like if somebody comes and says, what, what tastes most like beer? That yeah. would be. We'll try that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, w- you know, they're they say on those the mass beers are pilsner, unquote unquote right, right pilsner right. style triple hopped or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this would be closer to that just because it's, uh, the, like a true pilsner is more a little more bitter more hop yeah forward. we have a german pilsner on now as well oh also. yeah 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 that one just came out a couple weeks ago okay yeah um, yeah is there are there any german styles you haven't done yet oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah big time and there's uh there's lots of kind of older not currently popular or even just done as far as i know german styles um I think for whatever reason, having gotten any love in like the American craft beer movement, Mm -hmm. maybe because the tradition is more rigid and less experimental or less, you know, it's it's, it's stricter. So maybe people feel like they can't play with those recipes as much. Right. Like what are some of those? Like the double stick of all beer, for example, you know, like there's lots of kind of like imperialized versions of beers, um, different kind of like old sour beers, smoked beers. Yeah, what what oh, they like yeah. a smoked like a almost like a smoked goza berliner kind of thing. What is mm-hmm. this? Um, a Grzitski? Grzitski, yeah. Grzitski, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's that, there's the whole series of Bach beers mm. and sub series of Bach beers we haven't even started messing yeah. with yet. Uh, there's uh, another series of wheat beers like Schulps. Uh, what is that? That's a very much more wheat than say like a hefeweizen okay. so it's, it's super like a creamy 70 percent wheat wheat base yeah Is 70 there? 75 a bird with a clean ale yeast like a kolsch okay yeast. yeah so you've got a it's very creamy and you can do a dark and light style yeah uh, of course goza we haven't even messed with goza yet mm-hmm. um there's regional variations of the traditional styles like alt beer mm-hmm. you know typically we do a dusseldorfer uh, but there's Westphalia um, and Dortmunder. I mean, there's different variations yeah. of all these styles that you can do. I find uh, that fascinating. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I want to uh, try. It's very regional specific, and that's kind of what we do. We probably can pro- promote it more as regional specific when mm-hmm. we do our styles, but we typically don't at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just kind of brew them and, yeah. you know, go with it. So Okay. Yeah. No, I want to try all those. Like, uh, you know, there's so much, there's so much out there that I've never – gotten to experience and it's like yeah even if it's just little subtle changes because this this area had this ingredient and this area had this kind of water way right. so it, mm-hmm. you know we got these new beers yeah. or whatever so yeah so and uh so there's a lot of stuff just within germany that yeah will take us probably years to finally get put out you yeah. know and then variations of it so it's gonna be a long process just yeah. on the on the German side. Then we'll soon have a tank half the size of our normal ones, so we can do more of that stuff, kind of 
okay. specifically for the tap room. Oh, have some yeah. more brews, like one-off brews, like like those. Yeah, um, so we'll, we're, we've got a ten barrel here. tank coming yeah. in just to do one-offs or oh, cool. variation stuff. So, um, so yeah, we'll get that. Uh, how was the uh, when we were out here last time? You know, you had gotten your brew house put in, and you're doing pilot mm-hmm. batches. But how is brew? It, it was, it's a how many is like a steam jacketed or something? how what, how was it? It's a pretty unique system. Yeah, um, it's a, a Bruix system uh, <laughs> out of Slovenia, uh, and I went to Slovenia. Uh, is a one of my trips to Germany anyway. It's only about a forty-five minute flight, so very close. Um, and I checked out the system. Um, it's very unique because it uses uh, it's jacketed like a steam jacket system, mm. except the third-party heating is basically superheated water under pressure, mm. so it never uh, turns into steam. Okay. So you're you've got water coming through the jacket at. Um, I don't know, 230 degrees or yeah. so, you know? because oh, it's like back, like it w- doesn't steam away. Cause right, it doesn't CO. steam away. Right. So um, so there, it's very quiet. It's very efficient. It's very low maintenance. Yeah, it doesn't put off a ton of heat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not a ton nice. of heat. Yeah, right. Um, we got enough of it around here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's really nice. The, the ramp up on the temperatures are very quick. Um, so our brew days uh, are, are really pretty compact at this point. That's cool. So, yeah. So you, you're loving it. You're liking it. Yeah, yeah. So far, and we, you know, every time we brew, we find find little efficiencies we can do to cut off five minutes here, ten minutes there. Yeah, that adds up. So yeah. Oh yeah, our, it does. What's our, our first now? brew? <laughs> our first brew day when we started was like. It was like twelve or fourteen. No, I think it was like fourteen hours. Fourteen hours for one batch. That's a long day. Yeah, it was crazy. What is that? And now we've got it down to 11 and a half to 12 hours for two batches. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So we, we found a lot of efficiencies. What uh, what was the one thing you were doing that was so or less efficient than what you're doing now? Well, we, the, we had issues with the transfer. Yeah. Because uh, this German? system, no, this oh. system, when you transfer into the boil kettle, when you're getting the, the lauder done, uh, you there's two ways you can do it. And so you can just let it uh, drain naturally with the gravity, and then you pump the wort over which mm. takes quite a while mm. or with this system you can do it under a vacuum mm. and so it pulls the wort through mm. uh, but not so much to where you're getting any tannins or any bitter stuff coming through okay um, and that will save you quite a bit of time so we can get a transfer once we perfected that you know we were able to get the transfers done and yeah very that was the time. biggest hang up at that first. was the biggest hang up okay so. that's cool I always joke it's like when you start using a piece of equipment, I feel like it's it's like you need to season it a little bit, like a cast iron skillet. It's uh-huh. not gonna it's not yeah. gonna be very good. <laughs> it's like it's not gonna be very good until like a month in. Right. <laughs> right. But so. man, you have halved your time and doubled your output. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. So we've remarkable. really got it down to almost a science at this point. Yeah. So where we can Okay. You know, and also the grain build, you know, makes a difference as well. Yeah. To how well it transfers. So oh, depending on what it is you're so yeah. depending like on what it is we're brewing is a little tougher than yeah the half wheat. usually takes a little bit longer yeah. yeah what what's the percentage wheat on that on a half we're yeah. about uh, we're about 60 40 about 60 40 yeah. 60 wheat or 60, 60 wheat. wheat yeah that's that's pretty high that's right pretty high. anything over 50 i've heard is yeah anything over 50 it's it's required yeah. by german <laughs> well i think uh well i think brewing. most people okay. shy away from doing over 50 because they're afraid of what we're talking about yeah you know, sticking Stuck. to sparge yeah um but that's where rice hulls are your friend. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we use a lot of rice hulls. <laughs> um, so we, um, yeah, we do 60%, which is required. And you, th- you have to be over 50%, mm. you know, in German brewing. So we do 60. Um, and it comes comes across really nice. So nice and creamy, and yeah. s- but still light. It's still dry. Uh, what type of wheat? Is it like a... I just know German pale wheat. Okay. Yeah. yeah, all of our stuff is right now is is German derived. So okay. we use all Weirman malts right now. If it's for the German brews. Yeah. Now, when we do like our English IPA, mm-hmm. we use all British Maris Otter, Fuggle, EKG hops. We use the whole you know English ale. We use we. It's very region specific. As as specific as we can make it. Yeah. To where if you were over there, hopefully you would experience yeah. the same type of of beer. Yeah. So. Until we do like a. 
crazy American style, which we actually haven't done yet. <laughs> Not yet. We, have, we haven't done that yet. What? So, but we, it will it will come. You know what we are playing around with. I know there's a big haze craze out there, and mm. you know, of course we got our German Hefeweizen, which it's hazy. Quiet isn't there on the hops end of the haze craze, right? But uh, we're experimenting with uh, with that. So. Yeah. Uh, dry hopping, double dry hopping, late hop additions, so almost know. to kind of get it similar to uh, yeah. a, a haze, yes. but uh, but German focused without going outside the realm of German brewing. No, I think that's. Are you using all German hops or? Cause I yeah. know right now we are. We're right now we are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's. So. I like that because you're getting some of the fruity obviously from the yeast because it's a hefeweizen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's already hazy because yeah. it's a wheat beer. And right now we're kind of figuring out which hops complement and conflict. Um, mm-hmm. We're noticing that some of the more citrus forward hops really conflict, really? and then some of the hops that put forth a little bit more um, tropical fruit, mango, okay, like papaya. That makes that makes sense. Uh, Strawberry, yeah, like berry. Yeah. Yeah. That that really blends well with the characters of the half yeast. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the citrus is, I, I don't know if I'd say it necessarily conflicts, but it definitely overpowers. Okay. Yeah, it's I can it's, see that. it's oh. a kind of a, you think of banana and citrus doesn't really go as well as like banana and strawberries. Right. So yeah, they're more like soft. Like citrus is sharp. Right. Yeah. And the bananas, strawberries, plums, all that. That's yeah. softer. So that's what we're trying. I think that's where we're moving towards. Yeah. Is that, okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I pulled some on a test batch today, and it was like, uh, you ever drink that? I think it was Dole. You yeah. like it? It was the like orange banana orange juice. Banana or banana orange pineapple. Yeah. I took a sip of that today and kind of reminded me of drinking that shamefully yeah. on over <laughs> in college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that from back in the day. Was, uh, that stuff didn't last very long at home, though. We would, like, it was one of those things that, you know, your parents buy the groceries when you're a kid, and I'm seeing this now with my own kids. Like, you bring something home, and, on, and like, you come around the next day, and it's just gone. It's like, what happened to the thing I wanted to try? Yeah. Just you realize what kind of food you're buying is, like, crack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Exactly. I don't know when it happened, but they used to not eat anything. And they, can't, they eat everything. So right. I guess that's better, I suppose. But no, that makes sense, though. A hazy, hazy hefe. Like a. No, I, I did. I want to. Yeah. Yeah. You got me intrigued. I want to, like, watch. I want to watch the whole process. Yeah. So like, it's, weirdly. Uh, like, it's very interesting. <laughs> We're playing around with a lot of things. So. That's smart. No, I yeah. don't know that anybody's done that, but it makes yeah. a lot of sense. It just, like. Ooh, like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's some room to explore with that in the German styles also. Kind of what I was saying earlier. It's like I, the people that make German beers make really traditional ones, and I, we do that, and I think we do it well. We take a lot of pride in, in that, but I don't know. I personally like to experiment and come up with something new or innovative and yeah. see where that goes too. So yeah. I'm happy to be at a place where we can do both. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that this is available all year. No oh, thanks. I'm just, as I'm oh, sipping yeah. on it, your, the uh, Oktoberfest slash Merit. Is there a yeah, d- there's Merit. a tap room's keeping it alive, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's really good, and I bet I bet it goes really good with like Tex Mex. The yeah, heat is uh, some, any meat. Any it does. Grilled it's, meat. It's it any was, grilled meat for sure. It was right. ob- you know gonna be just a seasonal, and it was so well received mm-hmm. that we made it a year round deal. Now. The market doesn't want it year round because outside of the tap yeah, room, anyway. right? The tap yeah. room, but the tap room keeps us brewing that all year round. Well, that's so. it's a bit of a, a, a victim of its name. It is. It is. I kind like, of wanted to just uh, re-release it as a Vienna Lager. Yeah, and just keep it the same beer. Yeah, <laughs> no, it <laughs> changed the name. Yeah, it's, it's really it's good. It's I mean it's just such a versatile beer as far as like food pairings and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a shame that I mean I'm glad you no know, it's it, well, yeah. Maybe. If I'm gonna eat a beer, drink a beer with dinner, a German beer with dinner, that's like what i would go to yeah, most like of the a, time like a burger yeah or a, even a you know steak yeah or, yeah fajita tacos or something yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. what else ribs yeah yeah Any, anything grilled any. anything with a, like a little char char on it little, yeah yeah little, yeah, little, yeah. yeah. So as long as it's not too intense on the spice level yeah but even then it would kind of cool yeah. out some spice too yeah so that's really good it's th- that style they nailed it those germans man <laughs> they know what they're doing <laughs> Your people, they're good. Yeah. Uh, good, good on you. I'm, gl- I'm so glad they're there. Yeah, you they've know? been practicing for a little while. I'm glad they've, they've gotten pretty good, and uh, they should keep it up, and you should keep it up too. <laughs> yeah, this is good. I could, we may just end this podcast. I'll just sit here all day while y'all, right? Just sip. Well, we can pour some more. <laughs> podcast is just gonna turn in uh, to Josh. Just the sound of Josh drinking just beer. My gulps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 
All the downloads. <laughs> no. It's, um, I don't know. Um, okay, well, let me ask you this. You know, we talk about all your, your glories, great beers, people coming in. What have been some of the things that you've had to change that, you know, you looked at and you're like, this is definitely going to be a thing. And it was like, ah, that didn't really work. Is there anything like, or thi- I don't know, things you guys had to like take a step back on and challenge anything like that? Oh, let's see. Because yeah. I prepared, or at least as much as I thought I could for any contingencies. Uh-huh. So... That's a very good question. I might you might need to give me a minute or two to think about that one because we've had so much stuff go on over here. Mm-hmm. I would say the biggest thing is uh, one of the bigger things is you know well now even staff has been pretty good. You mm-hmm. know bar <coughs> bar business there's always a lot of turnover, mm-hmm. but yeah, but uh, I don't think there's been anything completely unusual with that. Um, yeah, I think with that it's just you kind of got to weed out your bar staff until you find the people that actually want to stick around and yeah. like it. But yeah. That's, the, uh, that's unusual. So far what we've brewed has all been really well received. So I don't think we've really had to step back. The only thing that I, I would say that we've had to change, maybe not in a negative way, mm-hmm. but in a positive way is to, um, somewhat in a negative way, say our loggers, for instance, uh, and our Kolsch, uh, it takes a lot of, of conditioning time mm. more so than what I thought and that was where we had to correct it where we had to change so we had to order we ordered some lagering tanks okay. um, and an additional smaller tank for our right now it would be a half batch but half batches don't do real well in our big tanks mm-hmm. so we ordered a smaller half half tank mm-hmm. um, I would those, say that's the biggest yeah. adjustments we've had to make yeah that right Berliner now. Weiss for instance was a half batch and it gave us headaches it trying to hell. yeah what what causes the the headaches is it just um well those tanks are half full and the jackets on them are small on the bottom okay so we yeah. can't get the beer to crash so they ah. ended up crashing in the kegs okay and so it's just yeah we can't get it to crash all the way plus because mainly because it's not hitting that second jacket but mm. but also there's so much head space in there on yeah. a half tank that that's fighting that temperature you know, you mm. got you know heat up there right. and fighting the cold bottoms hmm. but anyway it's uh that's been i think our biggest issue yeah was, i'd say yeah besides just like some bottleneck set, a yeah in some set yeah. of things just like plumbing not working correctly <laughs> or you know yeah technical stuff yeah just technical stuff trying to figure out um but um but yeah the biggest thing was the bottleneck you know our because we don't use any clarifiers mm. uh we don't use any biofine or any any anything like that filtration everything is time and temperature is inseam glass still a thing that's used isinglass or is uh done on the boil side okay uh, now we do use uh the carrageenan or Werflock, okay uh, which is seaweed yeah um and that's the one thing we use for the kettle but as far as uh, fermenting or conditioning the beer there's no nothing used <coughs> okay. so and we realized it's taking Instead of four weeks, it's taken six weeks. Mm-hmm. And so that starts to back up your capacity, especially now that we're getting big because we do a, a tremendous amount in the tap room. Um, I would say we're probably on pace to do 350 to 450 barrels just mm-hmm. out of the tap room. Oh, wow. um, and, and then now we're starting to distribute. So uh, that's really been putting a, a little strain on us. And, and now that we have so many different flavors, that adds to it. Yeah. So, and what four loggers? Uh, five yeah, loggers. At least four loggers. Yeah, four or five. Once we get the IPL back, it'll be five. Yeah. So, so, well, okay. So as far as that like, yeast goes, I know you're using. You've got a hef- hefeweizen and yeast is going to be different than the hell is yeast. Yeah. And, right. So how many different yeasts are We're you? We're using three regularly. Okay. So we three. have a clean German ale yeast, the hef yeast, a lager yeast. Well, I guess we have two lager yeast, but only one of the beers uses a unique lager yeast the ipl does okay um it's a yeah. uh, berlin lager yeast okay is that um, due to the extra hops or is that no it's a- it's a little bit i would say it's a little bit cleaner honestly than the munich the munich gives you just this little skosh of something extra mm-hmm. that just gives it like helps like bring out the maltiness of those munich styles yeah the uh berliner one we're actually doing that beer kind of like a california common so okay. it's uh it's almost like a hybrid Mm. So that beer is fermenting a little bit warmer. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's like high 50s mm. with a lager strain. Mm. Um, and then conditioned. Mm. 
but it, it turns quicker, it clarifies really quick, and you know, we're using uh we're using new German hops, Ariana and Holotar Blanc. So yeah. like some yeah, you know, like like Sauvignon Blanc flavors, like ripe berry yeah. from the Ariana and then it conditions and it's like bright and tropical and mm. fruity, but finishes crisp like a lager still. Yeah. Nice. It um, really showcases those hops because yeah. it's not there's not this big malt you know ester and phenol yeah. thing overtaking the beer to mm-hmm. kind of mute that yeah so yeah. all of our core styles are just like those three and then <coughs> some of the other stuff that we kind of play around with we i think we'll get a different strain for the ipl so i was having this discussion the other day because i'm a beer nerd geek dork but <laughs> so the hazy ipas i was always like oh, you know when i when that first came out i'm like that's oh, a trend and everybody yeah. was kind of yeah. like yeah, it's just a trend i don't think it's i think it's staying i think it's its own thing but like kind of the counterbalance to that was the brute ipas i yeah. think yeah. Th- i think those are probably i haven't seen that many around i like them yeah they, well, well they're interesting I, I liked i like ipas that are dry anyways though. right right oh, i don't want to they don't have to be so dry but yeah. like a dry ipa is better than one that's cloying yeah which but I, I think the ipl i don't i think it hits that it hits like all the notes that the brute did or does but in yeah so it, it's more satisfying or something. I don't know. It's like, and not so many people have tried the IPL like yeah. as far as brewing it. I see it every once in a while. There's a few people that do it, and it's like, it's a, it's a good beer. It's a, yeah, it's a good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a cool. Yeah, we're we're brewing it again this week, and yeah. so because it it ran out very quickly. Yeah, I think the and p- so like the pacing on like how many people are. It, I think slow and steady, and it hadn't just overtaken the market yeah. in like a. You know, and that was one that would satisfy people wanting a hoppy beer and mm-hmm. still fit our theme mm-hmm. you know and um right it definitely tastes german yeah um after the fact but it's, it's light and crisp mm-hmm. even though it's seven and a half percent yeah um sneaky beer i've yeah. actually kind of wanted to mess around <laughs> maybe do a test batch of a, a brute ipl just for fun just wanna yeah, yeah. just see what happens <laughs> yeah just like a real dry ipl yeah but that's probably, that'll probably just be for fun sure i'd try it no, I, the, yeah, I'm with you. I, I like the brute, brute IPAs, but I don't know. It's like everybody did them. They took it to an extreme. Something. Yeah. It was some like it was. Sometimes they were too dry. Yeah. It's just there's a it's a timing thing, and it's a, you know, whoever's out of the gate first in kind of doing the, I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a thing. It's it there's the time. It's there's more to it than just a good beer. There's it's there's timing. There's who tries it when and when it comes out and what's that, what else is out there. And there's just so many things you can't control. Right. I think like it's interesting, that beer, mm-hmm. the brood, brood IPAs. Um, but I think, uh, I just kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you're, they're interesting is what you, you yeah. Said. Like I'd like to try them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're interesting, but I'm not like sad that I haven't seen that many on tap lately when I go to a bar also. Yeah. I'm not like craving them. No, that's true. Yeah. I don't think I've ever created like the, I think the best one I tried. I tried some good ones, but I think the best one I tried was at uh Farm Boy Home Brewster. It wasn't landing it. Oh, there. nice. And it was like, yeah. Hey, you know, that's but it great. was just really really good. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what that that doesn't really it maybe just says Landon's really good at brewing. I don't <laughs> know. But it was just it was really good beer. So, okay, so anything is there anything you would not approach? Is there any styles where you're like that's outside of our you know, we're not gonna hazy IPA. Hazy, you just yeah. Not. That's just not on my radar. Okay. Yeah. Nothing like Tom's that. not a big hop head. I'm not a big on hazy IPA. Well, I, was, I bring in IPAs all the time. I'm like, hey, Tom, try this. Uh, and yeah. Mostly just to see his face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about like open fermentation or anything along those lines? That would be something interesting. Yeah. yeah. Nathan's talked about it a lot. I, you know. So I um, tried a one gallon batch of Hefeweizen and I open fermented yeah. it in a two gallon bucket on top of my refrigerator yeah. and ended up tasting like sweat socks. But <laughs> I've I've done a lot of uh, English and Belgian styles open fermented uh-huh. at home with great results. Um, Mine was probably I was cooking bacon and stuff. Yeah. In, oh, in, this, yeah. in the oh. kitchen. And it was a, a pie, too. A so smoked yeah. half. Well. How about yes. that? <laughs> Actually, well, isn't there like, in, uh, who did a smoked, I think like Live Oak did something. They, he does, Chip does a lot of smoky stuff. He has like smoke fest. I yeah, think they took like four smoke beers to JBF or something yeah. last year. So uh, I, I not, I've not tried it. I think I saw a quote from him that if he could only make smoked beers, he would. Yeah. 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 Has, have y'all, have you talked to Chip? Has he, I should no. bring him in here. No, yeah. we haven't. He's yeah. a good dude. He's funny. 
we had him on liquid lunch and he just likable guy yeah I mean, just you know <laughs> he loves beer he loves these style beers you know the german style beers and it's the same thing it's like you go up there and it's just it's one of those places where it's to drink the beer there just like drinking mm-hmm. the beer here in this tap room it's just there's something there's something to it it's like a yeah. sp- like a spiritual level kind of thing yeah. it just hits you on so many <laughs> levels i don't know it's it's um i don't know it's good stuff yeah i mean the great beers but it's just there's it's even deeper than just Liquid in a glass. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. People probably get tired of me talking about that kind of <laughs> stuff, but it, that's why I keep doing this podcast because it's, it's, it's important because people need to – I want people to come to the tap room. I want people to come to Klaus Brewing. I want people to sit down with their family, let the kids go play Connect Four or one of the, or the games or something, and just yeah. sit here and take a breath. And yeah. Yeah. And we, we get a lot of that on the weekends. You know, the families yeah. come out, and they can just find a place to hang out. Yeah. You know. Life, is, <coughs> life is hectic, and this yeah. is a little – even if it's just for one beer worth, that's that's worth it. Yeah. If you're running around this area trying to get school projects or dance competition. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. Yeah. <laughs> you need lots of sequins, so you just ran up to Hobby Lobby, and you're just like, all right, now we got to go around over here to get this and whatever. Just to take, even if you can just come in for 30 minutes for a single beer yeah. and just take a breath. Right. <sighs> reset. Yeah, just reset. Yeah. You know. It gives you an excuse to reset. You need it. Yeah. It, you need it. That's the thing. This life is so hectic. You need it. You just need a minute yeah. just to just like to take that, it in. It's kind of like that theory, uh, like, if uh, you instead of, like, going outside. I always wondered this because I've never been, like, a cigarette smoker. Mm-hmm. But, like, whenever my friends would, like, go out and smoke, mm-hmm. I'll just, like, go out and just breathe. Mm-hmm. Like, I think option. I'm doing what you're doing, but you, like, have like you have an excuse to do it. But yeah. sometimes you need an excuse to do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. You need I'm an excuse to way. take a moment for yourself. Yeah. I never, like, it, where I, I've never, I'm not a, yeah, I don't smoke either, but when they go out, sometimes I'll go out and it's like, I'll just, secondhand's way cheaper. So yeah. I'll just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll just stick with that. And you're just like, oh, it's nice just, like, it, Chilling out for a minute. Yeah, whatever the, the whatever the health deficit is from smoking a cigarette, I feel like you. I don't know if you make it up a hundred percent with just the relaxation. You know, yeah. just hanging out and chilling, taking a minute. I don't know. That's like whenever you see those people on the internets, where uh, they're like, hundred and three year old drinks bourbon and smokes cigars every day. Yeah. You're like, that's why that dude's one hundred and three because he doesn't worry about. Yeah, right. He's a. Uh, <laughs> He doesn't have any anxiety. He doesn't have any stress. He's right. just enjoying his life. Taking it out. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's worth sticking. I think there's something about that. Yeah. There's something to that. It's worth sticking around when you can see what's going on around yeah. you. Yeah. When you got your head in your phone. Like I do. I'm so guilty. I keep my head, my face in my phone oh, yeah. Yeah. all the yeah. time. I need like a Wi-Fi kill switch at my house where it, like, it shuts <laughs> off. And right. Like at the gas station, there's emergency shut off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm too, I've been, my finger's cramping. I've been doing this all day. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Come in here and put your phone away. Yeah. And just yeah. sit down at a table with a stranger and then become a friend. Yeah. These benches, the, the kind of hall style tables, definitely. These are great. Of, these are from Germany. There's a lot of people that. that will, you know, because the two people come in, this is a big table. Mm-hmm. And so people will share, yeah. you know, and eventually maybe they'll start having a conversation. So mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah, it's very community. Well, it's like know, the barbecue folks. places up in the hill country and stuff. They're just big, yeah. long tables. Yeah. you got to sit like the you first time sit I sit with somebody. Yeah, yeah. First time I ever experienced that, I was like, I don't know if I want to eat meat next to somebody. I don't know. But then, <laughs> then you get into it. Eating like, meat is very yeah, personal. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's very different. You know, the U.S., everybody wants their space. And, you know, I'm here and you're there. And, uh-huh. and we're in, in Germany, I guess maybe in Europe in general. It's very normal but to share the table. Yeah. Uh, and you don't might necessarily talk with each other, uh-huh. but it's it's your closer proximity. And you yeah, sh- just you being near another person. Yeah, little, like, and uh, and hopefully it does spur some conversation because you know it's great. You yeah. Know? Uh, so that's yeah, I was thinking want. about that. Like the time I spent in Europe, I always, when I was traveling, would be making friends with people near me that I was. When I was drinking, I would always make friends just out of proximity, uh-huh. and yeah. I think there's probably something to that. Yeah. Just uh, you're sitting around and there's you're just next to people. You're close to people yeah. and. You, in, you inevitably will interact. Right. So I think if I think like what you're talking about coming here and enjoying the whole experience, I think that's part of it too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah. There's, yeah. There's like I lots so. of kind of pathways that yeah. we don't realize that go into the experience of coming to like a beer hall or yeah, whatever it might be. Yeah, it's 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 needed. Uh, was there anywhere and for both of y'all? This is a question for both of y'all. In like German brewer, breweries that just inspired you that you know that. Yeah. For me, 
you know, my mom still lives there, so I go mm-hmm. there il- typically at least once a year. Uh-huh. Um, Where does she live? She lives in a, a town called Bayreuth. It's, okay. uh, I would say, 45 minutes north of Nuremberg, so okay. northern part of Bavaria. Okay. Um, and there, very, that region has uh, Meisels, which people don't know as much, but they do know the Kumbach breweries. Mm-hmm. You have Kumbacher, you've got Monchoff, you got Iku. Um, all of those are a lot more well known in the <coughs> U.S. So uh, those breweries right there, they're big on hefts there, um, and so that kind of inspired me when I went to go look at their breweries and what they're brewing. And their Hellas is phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, and so uh, that kind of inspired me uh, for how I, I want to do it. Now there's some certain brewing processes we can't do, but. Yeah. But, you like, know, we have to work around that. Wait, wait like uh, decoction. Like decoction, yeah. yeah. So, um, and I don't think I'd ever want to approach that. Just because <laughs> Those are long brew days, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's long enough in there. So we figured out workarounds. Yeah, we figured out workarounds. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um. but yeah, and the good thing is, is you know, my stepdad, he was in the brewing industry for thirty years over there. Okay. So, yeah, uh, as a chemist, and he has all the contacts. Uh, so he's taken me to Wine Stefan to get mm. tours and see how they operate. And is that, isn't that the world's oldest brewery? Yeah, oldest uh, continuously Continu- yeah. active uh, yeah. brewery. So pushing about a thousand years or so. That's I think. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. But it's um, a thousand and years. I mean they have whole, you know, four or five story buildings just for lab. Mm. You yeah, know, it's amazing. Yeah, that that setup. Uh, and so we got to see all that, see how they operate all the tons of different tri- types of strains of yeast they're trying to produce and mm. uh, get ahead of the game on infections and bacteria and, and it's kind of quite amazing so yeah I've seen a lot of different setups over there and and uh, it's been pretty inspiring on on how we want to do it and so that's cool yeah Nathan any, any? yeah um, I don't have as much uh, German beer experience as Tom does I've I've been to Munich, but I've spent a couple summers in Austria. Um, okay. And I was in Graz, which is down south, pretty close to uh, Slovenia, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, the brewery that was in town there is called Gerser. Okay. And I would drink their half all summer. And they had Hellas. Um, and so the Munich style has traveled down there a lot. Um, Hefeweizen is really popular there. Um, my favorite German brewery that I was always drinking here was Eyinger mm. and uh, like Celebrator the Double Box one of my favorite beers still mm-hmm. and their their Oktoberfest is that's what inspired me to make this one mm-hmm. that was like the Oktoberfest that I love drinking um, and so for ours that's kind of that was kind of what I had in my head to try to kind of get towards yeah um, a little bit lighter not any caramel malt nothing cloying nothing sweet mm-hmm. it has a sweet flavor there's nothing after the fact that it's sweet. It's just crisp and makes you want to go for another one. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I kind of was more into, like, as a home brewer, I was way into, like, Belgian styles, making lots of long-age sour beers. Yeah. Um, and just kind of, like, I like to cook and just experiment. So I love this. Just mixing stuff up and yeah. experimenting. And if it's bad, it's bad. If it's great, yeah. maybe it's There's been test cool. batches that <laughs> we've not move forward with it, <laughs> put it that way <laughs> you learned a lot yeah but it's worth the that's, test that's I mean, how you learn you'll, though you'll figure like, out whether it's doable or not yeah. now you know for next time it's just like you have all these options in your head mm-hmm. with something you can come up with and you know it works you don't and so it, it makes you more consistent going forward and you know a lot of these beers that we've made we didn't even do a test batch on because we 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 have that foundation of knowledge enough that we trust it mm-hmm. um like the Oktoberfest, we just went for it. Just we didn't do a it. test batch. Nailed it. Yeah. And yeah. we haven't changed a single thing about it since yeah, that first Yeah, we haven't batch. changed anything. And most of them have been like that. Yeah. You know? We still p- tweak some of the other ones, some of the core stuff. We'll yeah. tweak a little bit to see if we can get a little bit more of this here. What about like that water there. chemistry and stuff like that? Do you all start with? Oh, we RO everything. Yeah. So we even for the stuff we wash with because we don't want any buildup on anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then we'll build it back. So, um you know, we've got a uh, uh, custom type water chemistry, depending on the brews we do. Yeah. So, 
uh, and we'll add it back. Yeah. So we try to get that profile right. Okay. I like that. Everything. Just. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to start with a blank slate for everything. Yeah. Isn't Not that, a, isn't that yeah. The, the German approach? Like detail, detail, detail. Yeah. yeah. Everything, you know, <coughs> you know, noted. Right. Calculated. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that Germany and the way they do beers and then Belgium, which is like the complete opposite you know it's like yeah it's it's i yeah. love that they're right next to each other right you know like one like big brother little brother kind of thing and it's like yeah oh you're doing it this way i'm gonna do it the opposite <laughs> way. right yeah <laughs> you're paying attention to details no details we'll just see what happens so no i love that the whole dynamic and they're i mean the fact that they're right there so yeah yeah they you know the germans used to do a lot of brews like that yeah uh because the reinheitsko boat was only a bavarian law mm. for the longest time mm-hmm. and then it eventually uh, I think in the early 1900s it moved to the rest of Germany, but th- they were doing fruited dunkels mm. and, of course, goza, you know, with mm-hmm. the salt and uh, uh, and coriander. And, um, you know, they were doing a lot of more wild variations of, of, of beers that is verboten right now. Yeah. And it's more process verboten than it is, and some ingredient restrictions. But... Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think there's positives and negatives of that, mm. um, of those restrictions. Um, you know, I, I kind of like it for process-wise, but for... Um, Ingredient-wise? Ingredient-wise, I think it's uh, slightly restrictive. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's what, like, I don't, I'm going to throw it out there and see if y'all have an opinion on it, but, like, uh, Stone and their, you know, they had to, they closed up their... Their yeah, they opened that they uh, Berlin tavern. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't know too much of what offerings they came out with or why it closed down. Yeah. Um, I will say that, I mean, it's been three years since I've been over there. Mm-hmm. But when I was there, there was little pockets of uh, craft beer popularity. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, there's a big craft beer scene in Prague. Mm. Um, there's a fairly large one in Budapest. There's a huge craft beer scene in Slovenia. Mm. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Huge. Um, and it's very, uh, I would uh, say it's very American. It's very American. Yeah. yeah. A lot of IPAs. and Lots of you know. black IPAs for some reason. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, Austria, Germany, less of an American-style craft beer scene in general. There's little yeah. pockets where they have it, but. And it's, even then, it's not going to pay the bills. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, Germans are very. Yeah. Pretty much dead set on give me six liters of Hellas. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm here to drink today. Yeah. The yeah. little town in Austria that we were in, yeah. there was a Belgian chocolate place that had lots of Trappist beers. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like a sp- kind of like sports bar like place that had like, I think they had like Sierra and Nevada Torpedo and like a couple Belgian styles, but it was still like mostly German beers. That mm-hmm. was like the craftiest as it got. Um, Pretty much as far as I saw in, in Austria, if it wasn't just like a little boutique bottle shop somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even then, the bottles were usually like, oh, there's like some cool craft beer bottles up at the top of a shelf in a candy store. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, what's that about? <laughs> you know? <Right. laughs> I, I think, though, if I'm going to Austria or Germany, I don't think I'm going to be drinking American craft beers when I'm there, though. Yeah. I, I mean, I, hope, I mean, I'd like, sure, try it if they're there, if they live there. Give it a try, but yeah. Yeah. personally, I would be drinking the local. I was always seeking them out oh, just yeah. to see what they're about. But yeah. I mean, ninety-five percent of the time, it's—I mean, it's not—it's not macro by like American standards, but it's—it's it's like the big name in that region yeah. of where you're at, which is yeah. usually a very nice lager or half or something. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's great. Well, cool. All right. Well, oh, one thing we were supposed oh. to mention—you're open on Wednesdays now. Yes, we are. Uh, three to ten on Wednesdays. Excellent. So that's, uh, you know, of course, always new days are a little bit, you know, slower to get started. <coughs> but uh, it's been ramping up. So, yeah, Wednesdays now for Wh- sure. And Wednesday. we do $4 pints all night. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wednesdays so. is the new start to the weekend. It used to be Thursdays, but that was yeah. too, that way, that's too late in the Soon week. Soon it'll be Mondays. Yeah. Or Sundays. Yeah. Or <laughs> Saturdays. <laughs> Let's just restart it. Until it gets all the way back to Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come all the way back around. <laughs> but no, that's, I mean, a Wednesday... You know, middle of the week, just a little a recharge. If yeah. you're not drinking on a Wednesday, are you living? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I, mean, I don't think so either. I Responsibly. Mean, yeah. No. Come I have mean, a beer. Yeah. Come have a beer. 
It's yeah. Wednesday. Be relaxed. Well, Wednesday's ramping up. I mean, of course, our, our best night is is probably of all night of all days is Thursday because of our Stein night. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, where else can in town can you get a five dollar liter? I, I think also I just like you come to a German beer place and you mm-hmm. just drink a Stein and you just like you feel like you're part of the team or something too. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> has, it's just it, you just like feel awesome. Has, a has, this, has the singing started up? There, there Not any? quite yet, I mean, but we, we might get there. We need to get some songs. Like some, but, I think I need to start hanging out in the tap room more. Yeah, I, it's amazing. A lot of people will bring their own steins and they like to talk about them and show them off. It's it's really pretty cool. It's yeah. kind of again, it's a community thing, you know. I wasn't expecting all that. Yeah, actually, that when that was that. a lot of people bring their own steins, and a lot of people will buy buy ours because they want that big. You yeah. know, Krug, you know, mm-hmm. with a liter of whatever. Is that with it. the dimple, the one with the dimple? That's with a Krug? Dimple, yeah, it's a Krug. Okay, I've got one. A it's Moss, not the half a one, Moss it's Krug. the big tall one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can so, crawl inside uh, when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's rain coming, I'll just crawl inside my stein. Yeah. What's the biggest glass anyone's ever showed up with? Three liters. Three liters. Oh, wow. Yeah. We do up to a liter. We used to do $5 bring any stein, uh-huh. and then that got a little out of control. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to, like, plus you don't want... Yeah, it's just a, how long is it going to take you to happen. drink three liters? It's going to get kind of warm and tepid. And, yeah, you know, that's a five-gallon bucket with a handle you just glued on. You can't. Right, that yeah. doesn't count. <laughs> oh, we've had people come in with water bottles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've had people come in with, um, what do they call those uh, those metal coffee cups? Uh, like Arctic or oh, uh, yeah. uh, Yeti. Yeti. Yeti cups? I mean, that's a no-no. I'm waiting for it needs someone, to be a Stein. I'm waiting yeah. for someone to come in with the last name Stein and be like, Here's five dollars. Fill me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'd probably do it. Yeah. No. I, I, I think I think that's a technicality. Yeah. If you were born with that name. Yeah. Just yeah. Put slam down your ID. I wonder how five you do this, the Stein. The Stein hoist comes gets to a whole other level. Yeah. That's oh, a yeah. whole other thing. Have <laughs> <laughs> a Stein. You need to maybe look at some low carb options, sir. Right. <laughs> it's very difficult. Okay. So Wednesdays, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Uh, hours on Sunday. Uh, noon to eight. Noon to eight. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I got women's World Cup going on now. If yeah. Anybody wants women's to come. World Cup. Astros. Of course. Astros all summer long. Uh, Watch us uh, run into the playoffs. Yeah. Win the World Series. Take it back. Yeah. I hope. Hopefully. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> don't. Uh, I don't try to make predictions on the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else? I mean, we're only seventy. What seventy-five days till football season? Yeah, so we'll have <laughs> so, to see how that ramps yeah. up. You know? Yeah. So um, I, I've noticed, to be honest, so far, most of the people that come in here, mm-hmm. um, the vast majority, they don't even watch the TVs. Yeah. Know, they just sit there and have a conversation, which is unusual because most, a lot of times you go to a place and they've got the phone in front of their face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if there's four people sitting there, they're all looking at their phones. But it's a really a good atmosphere here. You know, people talk and have conversations. Yeah, that's good. It, like that. People are only helpful. coming to watch sports if it's like a big event. Yeah. Yeah. If it's just a normal well, kind of game. It's say, for instance, uh, Thursday when the Astros played that, like, or whatever, Thursday or Friday when they had that, like, seven-hour or five-hour game uh-huh. or whatever it was, went 14 innings. Uh-huh. There was possibly two, only two tables here that specifically came to watch the game. Yeah. Everybody else was just here. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, they ended up, you know, getting into it because it was such a nail-biter. But, uh-huh. but um but yeah, I mean, and it, we have plenty of TVs to watch the game. It's just that most people tend to conversate more. That's so, good. Yeah. Yeah. Connect on real life issues. Yeah. Yeah. So baseball will be important when it gets to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Then we may have some more interested parties. What uh, do y'all think y'all should write your own song? I'm just I I, I envy the singing, like in German. You could probably make that happen. English pubs and stuff. And stuff. You need to give me some German lessons, but I could probably write the song. My mom's coming in uh, on Friday, so I'll ask her to. Oh, she is. Maybe, yeah. yeah. How long she staying? <laughs> Shout uh, out to Ursula. Yeah, yeah. I would say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're going to a wedding in Kentucky, so she'll be here. We leave the following Wednesday, so okay. about five days. Where in Kentucky? <laughs> uh, Frankfurt, which is which is kind of south. It's ironic considering is. it's where German brew, and we're going to Frankfurt. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Spelled differently, but close enough. Close enough. Yeah. It, I yeah. believe that's where Four Roses is, right? Yeah, yeah. that's where Four Roses is. Yeah. Okay, and it's a quick drive to a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I think it's like uh, our, I don't know how south it is or how west it is, but if you're driving here from Houston to Louisville, it's like an hour before you get to Louisville. Okay. Yeah. That Always was the so most convoluted way to describe that. No, that makes sense. <laughs> so it's about an hour from Louisville. Yeah. 
So that's that's not like that's like across town here. Yeah. 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 I, people like when I go back home. I grew up in Arkansas. When I go back home, and somebody's like, "Yeah, it took me thirty minutes to get it get across town." Yeah. I'm like okay, and yeah, <laughs> it took, took me thirty minutes to get to work. Right. And it's like that's nothing. That's just that's, it's thirty minutes anywhere. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The last summer I was in uh, Europe. We, in one one day in a car, we were in Croatia, Austria, Italy, and Slovenia. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just so compact. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, no wonder everybody is more spread out here. It makes sense. Yeah. All those kind con- <laughs> all those countries <laughs> close to each other. All right. Well, um I guess we can wrap it up there. Uh just in the sake of you know, we're out of beer and everything too. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But delicious beers. Uh one and all, please come to Class Brewing here on Jones Road in the Sci Fair area, but uh, northwest Houston. Um make it a point. <coughs> make it a point to get out here because this is there's a little slice of heaven right here. Just come have a beer. Oh, come sit down at the it. table and yeah, make a friend and have a delicious, delicious beer. Anything, if you're wanting something tart or something malty or something crisp or something, I don't know, something surprising. Yeah. I've got tw- we've got at least 12 beers on tap. Yeah. yeah. So there's always going to be something. Food trucks all the time. Good people. Um, great tap room. Outdoor seating if, if you're so inclined. And, uh, you know, good times. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. I think that'll do it. Great. So awesome. we'll wrap it there. And uh, for Nathan and Tom, and uh, my name is Josh. This is Interbrews. This is Interbrews. This is where I do another quick reminder that uh, don't forget that Patreon account. If you want to help support the show, I mean, you don't have to. I'm a horrible salesperson. You don't have to if you don't want to. But, you know, please. But don't, 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 don't worry about it. But, you know, worry about it. Okay, that's it. Okay, bye, everybody. The preceding has been a presentation of Stewed Productions.